it's Megan with The Culture Project, and we are at SLS 20. We're just gonna walk around and ask people some questions. So what's your name? I'm Olivia. My name is Bridget. Hi, uh, my name is John Jordan. My name is Chris. Hi, I'm Lauren. And where are you from, Bridget? I am from Boston, Massachusetts. Nice, and so we are at SLS 20 just asking people why they're pro-life. So Bridget, why are you pro-life? Well, I'm mostly pro-life because I believe that all human beings should have the right to life. And if you don't have the right to life, then human rights are kind of moot. Like, if there isn't a right to not be killed, then what are we talking about with any other rights? So that's primarily why I'm pro-life. But I also believe women deserve better than the lives of the abortion industry. And what Planned Parenthood in particular has tried to tell women and successfully sold women for the past 40, 50 years. So yeah, I'm over it and I want to expose the truth and the dignity of humankind and the dignity of women and their power. So why are you pro-life, Lauren? I am pro-life because believe it or not, I was actually adopted from China and my birth mom couldn't keep me because of the, um, the one child policy. And basically, um, I also wasn't a boy, so that disappointed my birth parents because women were looked down upon in China and men were favored because they, um, Chinese, the Chinese government believed, like being the communist government they are, that like the men can actually do work and women were seen of like no value or useless. So my mom actually left me in um, a blanket outside the orphanage um, or outside the government building um, for two days and then the government found me and they put me in the orphanage which truly was a miracle because I was close to being malnourished and um, they only chose babies who were like physically fit and healthy enough to like actually go to the orphanage so I don't even know how I got there. If you had any piece of advice or maybe men out there who are pro-life but they're maybe really hesitant to get involved because let's be honest like sometimes being a pro-life man can be a little hostile um, at least from the opposition right so like what is a piece of advice that you have just like the men out there to give them that courage to just take that leap and get active. Yeah, for sure. And you know, we hear all the time like it's not your body. You shouldn't have any say at this. And I guess my my first thing that comes to thought is there are so many things that I'm not going to experience. You know, I'm fortunate that I never experienced child abuse and I'm never going to experience child abuse. But at the same time, I have to be against child abuse. I have to work to stop that. Abortion's the same way. I'm never going to experience abortion in the same way that a woman would. But at the same time, it's one of those just atrocities that I can't stand by. And I hope to be a father someday. And, you know, I can't imagine, like, a wife, a girlfriend going through that. And men really need to take responsibility and be able to stand with women. Um, if they have a, a significant other going through that, they really need to be able to stand with them. And... It's not just a women's issue, it's everyone is involved with it, and everyone has a stake in it. Okay, you're 18 and I'm 23, so we are two like young Catholic pro-life women, and that is like so not the narrative of today, right? Like, do you have any thoughts on that? Or like, what, like, how does that make you feel? Like, do you feel represented in the pro-life movement or like by the other side sometimes of like, yeah, like our young people in the movement? I think going on the March for Life with high school students for three years really empowered me so much. And bringing that back to my, I went to an all girls high school and it was Catholic high school, but um, not everybody that went there was super Catholic and um, pro-life. We had a lot of people that weren't actually because of the new wave of feminism and all that kind of stuff. And so getting to bring that back to my high school and kind of just getting to talk to people, to enter into conversation and dialogue about it, um, really opened my eyes to other people and where they are in their faith and where they are in their pro-life and getting to just enter into dialogue, not necessarily argue or, you know, start this rivalry, but rather just enter into the dialogue and like become aware of where they are and show them this is where I am and just lead by example every day. If you had one message to like other young pro-life people out there today about getting involved, you know, they're maybe they're on the fence that so they're like they're pro-life, but they're just not like doing anything about it. What would you say? Because you are you're doing this full time, right? Tell me about that. I mean, it's so exciting. We live at the best time in history to be pro-life. We know more about fetal development and abortion procedure than we ever have. We know about the humanity of the pre-born like we never have. There are so many lies of the abortion industry that we've exposed in the past 20 years. So it's a great time to be pro-life. If you aren't sure where to start, I would say read, go to liveaction.org. There's so much information out there and validate yourself with the education to go out there and the knowledge to go out there 
and tell people what's happening because we have the good news, we have the truth, we're on the right side of history and the right side of science. So there's nothing to be afraid of. I just encourage young people to go out there and speak boldly for life. Can Do you have any um, words for anyone who maybe is considering adoption? Like, do you have any sorts of encouragement, whether that's to a birth mom who's considering placing her child for adoption or, um, yeah, anything? Yeah. Well, if so, if there was a birth mom that was considering placing their um, their daughter or son um, for adoption, I would say honestly, like what my birth mom taught me, and even though I never met her in my life, was that by doing that, you're gonna save someone, and we don't exist for ourselves. Like, um, so we exist for others, and also like, if you don't have the financial means or just can't afford to take care of your child. There are so many families in America and well, just in the world in general who couldn't have children, who really wanted children. So there's like a whole like group of like parents that they want to adopt people and they, they actually and by like putting your baby up for adoption, like you're giving that child like the life that they deserve, the life that like God wants for them. And so by giving your child away and it's going to hurt, it's, it's hard, but like they're safe with another family and like that family is now going to give you like give that baby everything you wanted to give that baby even if you couldn't do it but it's gonna it's gonna be given to them through other parents and you know what and it's a beautiful gift and at the end of the like the end of the day you did what's right for your child you chose life like you should be very proud of yourself even if it hurts for the people who are listening right now is there any like message that you would say to people who are maybe on the fence about abortion like whether they're they're not really sure if they're pro-choice or pro-life they're they haven't really made up their mind. Is there one piece of advice maybe you would give them uh, moving forward? I would say always put the other before yourself and whatever it is. I would say don't judge what that person's life is going to be. You know, uh, you don't know, oh, I'm poor, so this child will suffer. You don't know that. They could get a lot of meaning out of their life. They're disabled, so this child's life is just going to be existence rather than uh, living, which I think is a terrible argument. Um, I think that's a terrible thing to say about people. Uh, and uh, it also has ramifications just beyond abortion. It has ramifications for euthanasia, m murdering children outside the womb, three years old. It's happened, you euthanizing them. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, look into the science, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's a part of the woman's body. Well, the, I mean, the first objection for that is the science is it is literally not a part of the woman's body. So even if you don't agree, it's a person yet, <laughs> you know, take a look at that. It's not part of the woman's body. If there's a woman maybe listening today who is considering abortion, what is one thing you just want her to know? You're not alone. You are not without help you're not without people who want to give you the support that you need um, there are thousands of pregnancy centers across the country who want to give you free quality care who want to help you raise your baby it's not just about saving the life of the child which is very important it's also about giving women the power and the resources to be mothers which is a pretty powerful thing to be so yeah you're not alone Bridget, thank you so much for your time and thank you for giving like your life to work with like live action and do this amazing pro-life work. Like you truly are a gift. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>